There are few things in all of science fiction that are nearly as iconic as the Death Star. I had no idea there were four Death Stars. I know nothing about Star Wars. I don't run a channel about sci-fi, but as we've discussed before, Star Wars is not sci-fi, it is fantasy. Don't debate me in the comments, you're not welcome. Despite all four Death Stars being easily destroyed, they are still looked at as the epitome of futuristic weaponry. And why wouldn't they be? The Death Star was capable of destroying an entire planet using nothing more than 30 frames of 1970s green CGI lasers. Death Stars are so popular that in 2013, White House staff took the time to release an official response to an online petition requesting that President Obama begin the construction of a Death Star as a way to create millions of jobs. <laughs> Technically, they were required to respond because the petition had exceeded the threshold of 25,000 signatures, but since it was clearly a joke, they probably could have ignored it. In addition to having no interest in blowing up planets, allegedly, the White House noted a couple of other problems with the project. It had an estimated cost equivalent of almost 9,000 times the entire world's GDP and would require are nearly a million years worth of steel at current production rates. It's a little bit unrealistic that, isn't it? Those are some pretty big problems, but let's pretend for a moment that they aren't problems, because this is the channel where we throw sh like that out of the window and don't think about it at all, like fantasy and some science fiction. So, let's imagine a scenario where we have the necessary funding and the necessary materials to construct a Death Star. Could such a space station actually destroy a planet? Global Annihilation and you. That's may come as a wee bit of a surprise, but destroying an entire planet is fairly difficult. Earth may have experienced multiple mass extinction events, but the planet itself is doing pretty good. What makes destroying a planet so difficult is this pesky little thing called gravity. Every object in the universe is exerting some amount of gravitational pull on everything else. I recently found out that an atom, like in my knee, is like doing gravity on something on the other side of the universe, which I know makes sense, but in the same breath is also mental. This works as a function of both size and distance, so most of those forces are effectively zero. Stupid knee atoms. But what if you could take a massive hammer and swing it with enough force to shatter the earth into millions of pieces? Well, it actually wouldn't matter. All of the rubble would remain in a gravitationally bound state and it would reform into a new and likely very similar planet. If the goal of a weapon was just to destroy all life on a planet though, this would be absolutely fine. But the Death Star doesn't just eliminate all life on a planet, it eliminates the planet entirely. To do this, the Death Star laser would need to be able to produce the planet's gravitational binding energy. That is, the minimum amount of energy that would need to be imparted onto the planet for it to cease being in a gravitationally bound state. And we can calculate exactly how powerful a laser would need to be to completely destroy a planet, and it's actually rather easy. The calculations are easy, that is, the amount of energy is, uh, well, laughably absurd. So let's go there. For the purpose of these calculations, we're going to assume that the target planet is a perfect sphere of uniform density. That's not really how planets work, but it is how theoretical physics works, so uh, we're going with it. The gravitational binding energy of such a planet is simply the mass of that planet squared multiplied by three times the gravitational constant, then divided by five times the radius of the planet. I thought you said this was easy, Kevin. <laughs> I know it is easy, it's just like complicated words. If we plug in the mass and radius of Earth into that equation, we get a gravitational binding energy of 2.24 times 10 to the power of 32 joules. <laughs> That is big. Anything to the power of 32? That's like 32 zeros, isn't it? <laughs> Using a much more complicated equation that takes into account the actual shape and density of the Earth, it gives us a result of 2.49 times 10 to the power of 32 joules. That's pretty close, so our simple formula should be good enough. That's also about 250 nanillion joules. A number so large you've probably never even heard of it before. Look, that is an incredibly large number, so we're going to need a little bit of frame of reference here. There's a good chance you've heard that if every nuclear bomb in the world was simultaneously detonated, it would destroy the Earth. As it turns out, that's not even remotely true. It's not anywhere near true. It's insane to think that. Yes, it would wipe out virtually all life, but the planet itself would be largely indifferent. A one megaton bomb outputs a little over four quadrillion joules, which is only about four times ten the power of 15. To reach the hundreds of nanillions of joules necessary, we would need to simultaneously detonate about 50 
quadrillion one megaton bombs, which is a lot. But these are still enormous numbers that are impossible for our brains to conceptualize. To get a better frame of reference, let's do away with these quadrillions or billions or even thousands of things. Instead, let's use the energy output of one single thing, and it's a big thing. It's the sun. Every second, our sun outputs 3.8 times 10 to the power of 26 joules of energy. That means, to destroy a planet, the Death Star's laser would have to fire an amount of energy equal to 100% of the energy produced by our sun over the course of an entire week. It's a lot of energy. And the laser releases all of that energy in the span of about a second. You've probably already guessed that a laser wielding that amount of power isn't anywhere within the realm of possibility. But there's actually some other issues. Just in case that wasn't enough for you, a week of the sun's energy. Where are you going to keep that? Like a massive battery? What's up? 99 problems. As cool as it may have looked when the Death Star blew up Alderaan, it's unlikely that such a space station could make a million voices suddenly cry out in terror and be suddenly silenced. At the very least, not the way it's depicted in the movie. The energy requirements of our planet-destroying laser aren't even close to possible, and honestly, it's unlikely that they ever will be. But while it is set in space, Star Wars isn't really about science. It's a movie franchise featuring magical space wizards armed with laser swords that are powered by magic crystals. It's fantasy! So let's just do some magic Jedi hand-waving and pretend that the Death Star somehow is able to create the massive amounts of energy required. A week of the sun's energy. Even if that were the case, there's still a lot of problems. Least important of those problems are the visuals. The Death Star is depicted as having eight small lasers converge on a single point to amplify into one super laser. It looks really sick, and it's absolutely not how light works. Those thinner beams would just pass through one another rather than combining into a super laser. It's a nitpicky thing, but it's also super f***ing obvious. The other issue, visually, is that even if we were to destroy a planet with a laser, it probably wouldn't actually explode. The more likely result is that the planet would be vaporized. In order to make the planet explode, the laser would have to burn through the surface layers of the planet to the core, melt the core, then convert it to steam. This would be highly destructive, but it wouldn't necessarily cause the planet to explode. And even if it did, there wouldn't be any explosive fireball. The massive expansion of gas at the core of the planet would just blow the planet apart, sending chunks of matter hurtling in every direction. But those are just issues with how the planetary destruction is depicted on screen. None of that is to say that if the Death Star magically generated a 250 nanillion joule laser, that it wouldn't destroy the planet, and that's true. Unfortunately, it would also destroy everybody on the Death Star. Oh no! Anyway, lasers have this tendency to produce heat. The amount of heat generated by a planet-destroying laser would be more than enough to completely melt the Death Star. The heat generated by the lasers would actually be a bigger problem in space than it is on Earth because there's no atmosphere in space and heat only transfers through radiation. Heat sinking in spacecrafts is extremely difficult and it's incomprehensible to think that would be any non-magical solution to the amount of heat the Death Star's laser would generate. There's also one other problem that is often overlooked, the conservation of momentum. If you've ever fired a gun, you should be familiar with the concept of recoil. If you have a system that starts at rest, in this case the loaded gun, then a bullet is fired out of the gun's barrel, whatever momentum the bullet is carrying in one direction, the gun must have an equal amount of momentum in the opposite direction so that the typical momentum of the system remains at zero. This results in recoil, and the faster and more massive the bullet, the stronger the recoil is going to be. The reason people tend to overlook this with regards to laser weapons is that lasers are made of light, and light has no mass. You're undoubtedly familiar with the equation e equals mc squared, first stated by Einstein in 1905. However, this formula is only for objects at rest. Once something is in motion, its momentum also contributes to the total energy. In 1928, English theoretical physicist Paul Dirac expanded on Einstein's formula to give us the formula for objects in motion. E squared equals P squared by C squared plus M squared in bracket C to the power of 4, with P being momentum. I have no idea what that means. Look, light doesn't have any mass, but it does have momentum, which means it does also have recoil. You wouldn't notice this on something like a laser pointer because the energy is rather low, but the energy of the Death Star's laser is big. <laughs> it's high. Since light has no mass, the second half of that equation will equal zero, leaving us with E equals PC, or energy equals momentum times the speed of light. We already know the energy, which is that ludicrous number we calculated at the beginning of the episode, so we simply divide that by the speed of light, and that 
will give us the momentum. At 300,000 kilometers a second, light is certainly fast, but, but dividing 10 to the power of 32 by 10 to the power of 5 still results in an astronomically large amount of momentum. Depending on the exact values for the radius and mass of the Death Star, the super laser would have enough momentum to propel the Death Star backwards at 100 kilometers a second or 360,000 kilometers an hour. Anybody on board would be subjected to as much as uh, 2,100 Gs. Considering a normal human could survive 9 Gs, and even then only for a few seconds, this would be well, extraordinarily fatal. There are many ways to counteract that momentum by increasing the mass of the space station, but it would require the ship to somehow have a density equivalent to the core of the sun. That's not possible, and even if it was, the ship would have a surface gravity of 15 Gs, which again would be fatal for all parties involved. Except uh, maybe for droids. Alternate solutions. All right, there are a couple of commonly proposed workarounds for the sheer impossibility of a mobile planet-destroying space station. The first is just to make the station immobile. Rather than having a ship traveling around a galaxy far, far away, it could be tethered to a star whose power is being harnessed by a Dyson sphere. Since the energy required to destroy a planet is equivalent to the full output of a star for one week, all we would have to do is use our Dyson sphere to store all of that energy up for a week and then discharge it over one second to destroy a planet. Easy! So, you might be wondering how we're gonna store such an immense amount of energy. Well, uh, yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no answer for that. There ain't no battery big enough. The other next two theories are closely related. One is that the laser we see isn't ordinary light, but is instead a beam of positrons. Positrons are antimatter particles, and when antimatter and matter collide, the matter annihilates one another, resulting in a huge release of energy. The related, but much less cool theory is that the laser we see isn't a weapon at all, it's just the targeting system for the launch of an antimatter bomb. In either case, oh, we still encounter the same problem. It would take a lot of antimatter to destroy a planet. Specifically, it would require trillions of tons of antimatter. At our current levels of production, it would take about a billion years to create a single gram of antimatter. In order to create enough antimatter to destroy a planet, it would take an octillion years or so. There's also the small problem that antimatter and matter are annihilated when they make contact with one another, so how exactly we're going to safely store those trillions of tons of antimatter is, uh, yeah, again, there's this. <laughs> it's just not an answer, is there? Analog solutions to high tech problems. So, look, maybe we've been overthinking this whole problem. If for some reason we really wanted to destroy an entire planet, do we really need lasers or even bombs? As it turns out, the most realistic and practical solution is also the most low-tech option. It's something called a relativistic kinetic kill vehicle, and it's a fancy way of saying, just hit it really f NASA's 2022 DART mission showed us that we no longer need to fear global extinction by asteroids. If an asteroid is coming at Earth, we can just crash a ship into it and change its trajectory. We threw a tiny little ship kind of faster than an asteroid, and it altered the asteroid's path by even more than we had hoped. It's a simple plan, and it scales really well. In space, no one can hear you scream, what with it being a vacuum and all, but the great thing about a vacuum is there is no friction. Objects moving don't slow down without some sort of external force, and there is no terminal velocity. So instead of throwing something tiny at an object kind of fast, what if we threw something pretty big at an object at a meaningful percentage of the speed of light? Immense damage would absolutely happen. As an example, Let's turn that Tesla that Elon Musk launched into space into a literal kill vehicle. If we accelerated that car to 99.995% the speed of light, or once it collided with its target, it would release the energy equivalent of a 2,000 gigaton bomb. And that's just a small 2,700 pound-ish car. A larger object could assuredly cause total annihilation of an entire planet. Granted, we'd need to first figure out how to accelerate a large object to close the speed of light, but you know, that's still a lot more realistic than a Death Star, isn't it?